can get this audio dialed today so it doesn't go scratchy for you guys. I think I just had it turned up too high yesterday. Welcome, welcome in. How's everyone doing? I'm doing pretty good. Was up really early again today, but yeah, everything is a-okay. No complaints here. Bonk, you were first today. Thank you very much. Kimmers, good to see you as always. Who else we got in here? Cookie, welcome in. Cookie, your shepherd's pie looked so delicious last night. Did it turn out good or what? Hello, Chef John Leung, a fellow Canadian. Thank you for the lurk, sir. Yet it is. Okay, I was laughing. I was like, yes, it's Super Bowl Sunday. What's Puppy Bowl though? Like here in Canada, we don't really know that much, I guess, about Super Bowl unless you watch every single year. But why do you call it Puppy Bowl? There's something uh, with that, I'm sure. Scoots, welcome. Your snacks are ready. Just need to cook it except for the pork belly. Everything else is prepped. I love that feeling, hey? Seriously the best. You're just like, ah, I'm done. We're ready to go. Now I can relax. A Super Bowl dinner? Of sorts. I don't really watch football, but I was asked to make something Super Bowl snacky today for the game. And yeah, one of my favorite things to make at home is nachos because you can just save a lot of money making them at home for yourself. And it's fun to like use up a bunch of different stuff out of the fridge, right? Welcome in, cat. Woke up at a decent time, feeling good. Looking forward to the nachos. Me too. I'm very excited to munch on this kind of stuff today. I've been eating very healthy lately. We gotta switch it up. It was so delicious, Cookie. The house still smells like the shepherd's pie. Yes. So many dishes to do, though. Ugh. It's the worst feeling ever, right? You make like the best food and then you're like, oh my gosh, who's going to clean up? <laughs> oh wait, that's me. <laughs> uh, shoot. Blondie, what's happening, dude? The channel has puppies playing in a football field. That's what the puppy bowl is. What? I would go watch that one. All puppies playing with toys on a mini football field? Okay, that's that's my kind of bowl. <laughs> and they need to get adopted? Don't tempt me. The roommate's friend has Bull Mastiff Lab puppies for free. Don't even tempt me right now. Boss man, you ready for nachos? Oh yeah. Okay, so here's the menu. A little bit of cooking today because we're going to pressure cook the black beans for it. I thought I would show you guys something different rather than just being lazy and or easy. Whatever you decide you're feeling like and buying a can of black beans that's already cooked. Because those are expensive in the store now, especially if you don't get them on sale, I found. Is I could either get two cans of black beans for the same price as an entire bag of dried black beans, which will probably give me at least three times the amount, right? So that's kind of how I think now is because I guess I have time in my life to do these things. We can take that time, save a bit of money. If you're in a pinch for time, it sucks, but you have to spend that little bit more to buy those canned black beans. And then to go with that, so earlier this week for a protein for myself, I bought a rotisserie chicken from Costco because they're eight dollars is to for me to buy just like one whole chicken for myself from the store and then go to cook it. Well, the chicken starting is twelve dollars just to buy it. And then I have to take all that effort to come home and cook it myself. So you really can't go wrong with buying a Costco rotisserie chicken. I know it's probably not the best quality meat or chicken out there, right? I know that buying it. But there's so many different things that you can do with that meat after you pick it off the bones. And so I do that right away. I just let it cool once I get home, pick all the meat off the bones, and then I make my bone broth for the 24 hours. And now we have all this yummy chicken meat to use throughout the week. So that's my easy way of that. But if you didn't want to do it the easy way, you can just go buy chicken breast or chicken thighs and cook them and shred it yourself at home. 
that is well cookie right is i made the mistake because i did want to see the price of the rotisserie chickens at a regular grocery store compared to the wholesale grocery store also i probably wouldn't have even been able to see the price because i go so early right like i go when the store opens at 8 a.m and they don't have the rotisserie chickens ready then in the regular grocery store but it's probably only a couple dollars more. And then, yeah, like I said, it's already cooked. So yours are like $7 in a regular store cookie. Yeah, that you can't beat that, honestly, right? There's the puppy bowl puppies. Thank you for that. <gasps> oh my goodness. I love it. Okay, what else are we going to put in there? Some green onion, pickled jalapenos to spice up our life. Obviously, lots of cheese. And then for our sides, which are really typical sides to get with nachos. And I always get like really upset if I go out, order nachos somewhere, and they don't give you all of the condiments for it. Like you have to order it extra. So you should always have at least salsa and sour cream. And then the one that I find that they charge a lot extra for is the guacamole. So yeah, I really love the guacamole. So that's maybe where we can save money, just making it ourselves at home, right? Because what, if I go to look at a pub here, let's let me go look at like a really popular chain pub here, Central Social Hall and look at their nacho price, which I'm sure they have on the menu. Let's see how much it is. Hi, Michael, welcome in. And Kat's asking, have I ever made sour cream from scratch? Not sour cream, but I've made creme fraiche, which is probably like very similar to the same thing, right? I don't know what the difference is between sour cream and creme fraiche, but it does take a couple days. It is quite easy to make and also fun. A little bit different from sour cream if you make the creme fraiche at home. It's not as like thick, I find. Yeah, the avos I got on sale. So they had this case of avos on sale at the store this week for the Super Bowl, like it was branded on a football field was what the case looked like. And I, there was 10 avocados in it for $10. And so I kept five of them out on the counter and just put the five other dragon green eggs in the fridge so that I can just ripen them next week when I use them. I wanted to also test that, right? It's like, oh man, I'm never going to eat these 10 avos by myself. So let's see how long they last in the fridge. I've had it both ways, true caretaker. I guess I should say it depends on how long you leave your creme fraiche to ferment. The longer you leave it, the thicker it's going to be. Boom. There you go. Okay, that's all I got. Let's get started. I don't think today is going to be a very long stream, nor is it very difficult. We're only really cooking one thing and then everything else is just in the oven with the nachos. But quite a bit of prep, I find, and that's probably why nachos do cost so much in a restaurant, because there's so many different components to it, right? Oh, I'm turning the page. Look, there's only one more sheet of paper on the notebook after this. It's always a good feeling. You're using nacho fries? Whoa, what's that? Is that something you can buy from the store? Just gonna go grab my water. I forgot it. We're chatting it up. Oh, I also have a really cool update for you guys from yesterday. Wait, I've had those. Taco Bell nacho fries. I remember having those when I was young. I foxed hard with those actually. Mm, now I want that. Okay, so my update is super cool. So at the beginning of the year, I got an email from my culinary school. I'm still in touch with them, which is also pretty cool after like 12 years of never going back there. 
But anyways, I'm still in touch with them because in the dining room, so often in your culinary school, there is a dining room because you have to learn how to cook in a restaurant, right? And the general public usually is able to eat in this dining room, whether it's like a lunch service by the students or a dinner, but whatever, right? So he runs the dining room and then he also has started a Twitch stream. If you guys have ever seen Ernest cooking pop in, that is my culinary school. And so he emailed me at the beginning of the year. And honestly, like we didn't know what we were doing, right? I was trying to find a job and all of this. So I didn't really want to commit to what he was asking yet is they are doing an alumni series dinner at the school now. And this is going to be in November. So I have a lot of time to plan for it. I was like, yeah, that is super cool. Like I finally emailed him back last night saying I was interested now that I know I'm just gonna be at home, right? And so I was like, is there other alumni going to be involved? Like how, what exactly is this going to entail, right? He didn't explain it too much. And so I guess once a month this year, they are just showcasing one alumni student. So that dinner is just to showcase me. What? which I think is so cool. So he also said, I get a table for four at the dinner where I can have four guests to come and eat for free, but everyone else, they have to buy tickets to go to this dinner and I have to create a four course menu. That's how I feel. Isn't that so cool? So I have some things to work on these next couple months and start getting organized. I really want to make it like the best it could be. Time to show off. Exactly. It's not, there's no monetary compensation, which I didn't think there would be, nor do I want that, right? Is the money from the tickets that they're going to be selling is going to go back into the school to support the students with these kind of programs. I guess they had like a wine club dinner before this every month that didn't really take off. So they're going to try this instead. The best it could be, yeah, it better involve feta. Okay, and so for the second course today, this is inspired by my friend from Denmark. <laughs> Better watch out, Mish. Careful what you ask for. Thanks, Kat. I'm proud of myself too. That's like a big thing. I don't know if I have to cook for everyone by myself or if I'm gonna have students helping me. But yeah, I have to make the menu, create, come up with the ingredient list, and then the instructors are going to order all the food for me. Hello, Xylox. Welcome in. Okay, let's get started. I am going to start by getting our beans pressure cooking. And then once those are going, I think we'll leave them 30 minutes. Because every time I've cooked pressure or pressure cooked beans for 20 minutes, I always need to do them longer. So we'll just go longer. I don't really care either if they like semi fall apart. Let's be honest, right? Beans are beans as long as there's substance there. And yeah, we have 30 minutes to create other things and it's okay if the beans cool off a little bit while we're working on everything else too. We'll probably go beans, make our salsa, as well as the guacamole, because we know that condiments always taste better when they have a little bit of time to sit with the flavors in the fridge. And then easy things like shred in the cheese, pull in the chicken, and then we'll build our nacho tray. We'll probably do a couple layers because that's how you properly do it. Show you guys the right way. Anyone else having nachos today? Cool beans, even, Katniss says. Yes, you are right. Okay, pressure cook our beans. I don't think I've ever pressure cooked black beans before. I've done pinto beans. I've done kidney beans. I've done white beans. But I've always just bought a can of black beans. So I'm even doing something new for myself today. Nachos. <laughs> we gotta go nacho! <laughs> Gonna go watch Nacho Libre after this.
Just write in our list so we don't forget anything. Okay, our beans, pico, guac, chicken, cheese, pickled jalapenos, green onion. I think that's it. Oh, and then the sour cream just at the end to put in a little bowl. There's a cat food brand called Nacho. <laughs> Don't forget about your stretchy pants. Oh yeah, we are ready. We are good to go. Have no fear. Hate when places just pile on a bunch of chips and pile on the toppings on top. I know, right? It's like put effort into it just a little bit. I will say I got pretty good at making nachos when I worked one summer at a golf course. And that was on the menu, right? Very simple, just like kind of pub fair menu for them to munch after they're done playing. But yeah, I layered those nachos and like people got to know it's like, oh, she's working tonight, get the nachos. <laughs> Make them right. Especially when they're like almost close to $30 for a plate of nachos, come on. Your store was ripped today. You suspect Super Bowl is why? I will say I was grumbling this morning. Sam got me to go out and buy a couple Legos from Costco that were a really good deal to resell. I was like, ugh. I'm grumbling and he's like yeah I've grumbled too when you ask me to do things but I still do it right but it wasn't bad I was actually in Costco before it even opened and gone before it opened I was like peace oh also coolest feeling ever I was the first person to get rung through in the store today I had to wait for the guy to even set up the cash register. I was like, no rush at all. He's like, don't you have errands to do? I'm like, I am doing errands. He's like, don't you have somewhere to drive? Like the weirdest questions. I was like, I drove here. <laughs> He's like, oh. He's like, what else are you doing today? I was like, I'm working after this. I was like, this is what happens when you wake up at 6 a.m. Okay, so yesterday at the end of the stream, we just soaked our dried black beans. Look at, you can't even see them. I love when this happens with the black bean water. It kind of looks scary. Don't look into the abyss. So I'm just gonna strain that out and we'll get it into the pressure pot and we will fill it up with a bit of water, maybe a touch of salt. But I usually, when I pressure cook, I don't put too much other flavorings. I don't know why, that's just a me thing. Do shots of bean water. Do you want me to be farting it up later or what? Also, I will say this. That's something I've learned actually, is when we soak our pulses like this before we cook them, it helps with digestion. <laughs> I was up in Adam. I was. And this is the rule I had because I actually didn't know if they still had the Lego sets at Costco. So I was like, hey, if I go there and they have them, perfect. I'll just go in and out. But if I go there and waste my time and they don't have them, I said I was going to get a treaty from Starbies. But that didn't have to happen. I just zoomed it home. I just don't know why that guy was asking me all the questions. Also, you can see these look really cool too, is they kind of go like purple, I find, when you soak the dried black beans. But you will also see how they like kind of burst open some of the skin. And that's what helps the water get into the bean and cook them better. I didn't even measure out what I soaked yesterday. I just kind of eyeballed it and it's probably going to be way more than enough. So I never pour hot, hot water either with the pressure cooker. We let it come up to a simmer first and then pressurize it. And then with this pot, where are these little, I don't know if you can see the increments just like really faintly. 
but there's a measurement on this side here where it has a max line. You just don't want to go past that. And we won't even get close to that today. I usually go with like the one layer of beans and then I just pour around double the amount of water on top. It's not even um, half full, this thing. So just a pinch of salt. So they're not super bland. I might actually throw a bay leaf in. His bay leaf and beans is so good. Should I put some bouillon? Maybe I will, cat. You're talking me into it. I'm thinking this one. This is like one of my faves lately. I don't know why. The tomato and chicken one would probably be really good. I mean, I just put a bit of salt, so I'm glad I didn't put too much. There's also quite a bit of water in there. Ugh, the canor for Mish. Do you like a couple teaspoons worth? The other thing that I would thought would be good with this if you've ever had it, is like a roasted corn and black bean salsa. If you didn't want to have the beans plain on their own. Hello, Jelly. How's your Sunday? One leaf of bay. And it was also awesome at the store this week. They had all of the ingredients on sale to make, if you wanted to make like nacho kind of things like pico de gallo, the tomatoes, the onion, the cilantro, the limes, everything was on sale. I was like, that's too perfect. So now just bring that up to a simmer. We don't put the lid on until it is simmering. That away. Did I see there was a Greek in here? Hello, Greek. How are you? You've made black bean salsa soup. That's amazing. Ooh, I could see that. You eat it with tortilla chips too. Is that a bay leaf on the top? Yes, sir. Billy says it's a Sunday filled with scaries. You don't want to go to work tomorrow. Oh, you have the Sunday scaries. Go do something fun right now. So that you feel like you did everything you should have. You're vibing so hard today, Greek. That was me yesterday. I'm not vibing as hard today as yesterday, but we're still pretty good. Okay, so while we're waiting, we'll get out the ingredients for our pico de gallo salsa. Really, really simple. Tomato, white onion, cilantro, lime juice, salt and pepper. That is it. One of my favorite things to make. And it's good leftover too. Lasts, I would say, up to three days before the tomatoes start to taste weird. You always add adobo seasoning to your pico and guac. How do you add the adobo seasoning? Because here in Canada, we can really just get chipotle pepper and adobo canned. So that's why I ask, how do you add that adobo seasoning? Come um, to me, onion. Okay, the moment of truth, our onion again. 
this onion again. I'm scared. Is it snowing for anyone else? It is so dang nice though. We have the heat cranked like off and the windows are open. I think all this snow is gonna melt today and then it's gonna come back tomorrow. <laughs> Your hubby made an amazing pico last week and you ate it with pork belly tacos. Right, there's so many different things you can eat it with. Just plain with chips and tacos with nachos, quesadilla, burrito. You can make like a taco rice bowl, taco salad. We can go on and on. Adobo seasoning is powdered. That's what I was assuming, but we just don't have that available to us here. Ooh, sweet cat. Okay, it's linked from Walmart. Maybe we do have it, because I've seen that brand. Is that Goya? No, what's that brand? What's the first letter on it? It is Goya, okay. I think I've seen that actually. I just don't know if I've seen the adobo. Okay, now I have to venture to Walmart, wherever that is. Where's the closest Walmart? Oh shit, that's not far. It's not far, it's in the mall. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah. Learning. Thanks, friends. Douchebaggins, it's really nice. You also put it on everything, kind of like Frank's. Okay, this is gonna take a couple of moments, I think. So let's just come over and start chopping. I got all the ingredients here. You could also like true take or a true caretaker says make your own adobo seasoning if you have the spices in your house. Yeah, we're going on a trip to our favorite Wally World. Whoa, there's a hole in my bag of limes. So I got four limes for $3, which I thought was a really great price because lately they've been, I think, either like $1.99 each or 99 cents each. So we still did really good on the lime price. And they're also huge. Like that is a massive lime. That's almost bigger than a lemon. So I felt so good about that. A really nice little tomatoes on the vine, our white onion, and then a cilantro. So we'll need cilantro for the pico, as well as the guac. So let's make sure that at this time we cut extra. And then I'm also just gonna pick out any of the poopy leaves so that they don't make the rest of the cilantro go bad. This is a good looking bunch though, I have to say. It's not just like all going gross and soggy. Malls are becoming a thing of the past. Yeah, it is interesting. I don't go to the mall often. I mean, I don't even really leave the house that often like to go shopping or anything. Once a week, that's it. Right? They look like painted lemons, Kiwi. Did you make it to your destination yesterday? I'm assuming so. Also, are you still scaring old ladies in America? Don't do that. You don't go to malls either, Kat. Yeah, the only reason I've been going like to the mall is because that's where the post office is. This seems a bit dirty, the cilantro. Like, you know when you can feel the granular bits on your fingies when you're picking through it? So let's just give it a little rinse before we pick it off the stem. Oh my gosh, Kiwi. Yeah, he was on... Was he on the train or the plane? I can't remember. but he decided to just take a quick trip to America and then the old lady was scared of him. It was on the plane. Even worse for her, cause it's not like she could just like move her seat. <laughs> Katniss asked why was Kiwi scaring old ladies? He was honestly just being himself, unfortunately.
Okay, we're just gonna pat this dry. Cause it's hard to chop wet herbs. They just go mushy. Heard of a study a few days ago that said Gen Z are spending more time at the malls and brick and mortar stores in recent years. The kids are all right. I do actually think that. Cause yeah, often when I have gone into the mall, it is full of kids, especially after school. It's a huge stop or a huge hub for the bus stop. Okay, our beans are almost simmering. I think we can quickly go over there and pop the lid on. Start pressurizing. Cat, he was saying it's because he's like full of tattoos and the old lady was really religious. He thinks. She was very sus of the QVP. Okay, lids on, and then we want to pressurize it to full pressure, which usually has a meat symbol. This one looks like a turkey or a chicken. And then the low pressure looks like veggies. I don't often use that. And then the other one is just to release fully. So that'll take a couple moments again, and I'll show you when it is pressurized. Let's pick this. What you guys doing this week coming up for Valentine's Day? You got any crazy plans? <laughs> Katniss, yeah, you're a medical assistant. Like, you can't hide them, right? Nor should you have to. So yeah, the religious people in the hospital, I'm sure. Right, Greek? Valentine's Day is a Wednesday. I know, it's so ridiculous when it's like during the week. I always find that you're more prone to not celebrate it. It is forced affection day. I'm actually making plans with my friend. We're kind of having a housewarming together. And we're both long distance right now with our partners. So I told her I would bring over a box of gluten-free Annie's for dinner, a can of crab, and a lobster tail because she's vegetarian. But I know she always eats seafood still. I was going to make that for us. And that's about it. We're both like, we're not going out. Go out for Valentine's Day. I use a stovetop pressure cooker. It takes guts. It does. I will tell you, our Wester, there was once upon a time that I was really scared of them. Like, really scared of them. I didn't grow up getting taught too much to use them. So it wasn't until I was forced to use it in a restaurant to prepare the food for the menu in my station that I got more used to working with it. And now I'm not scared of it at all. And it's so dang handy. You don't do commercialized greeting cards and chocolate holiday. No, Sam and I don't either. But I thought it'd be so like cute for my friend and I to do something together instead. That means she's a pescatarian, Bonk says. Yes, sir. Yeah, one of our favorite things to do when we were younger, because I've known her since I was 14. My longest friendship ever. We actually worked together at the grocery stores where we met, and we're still friends after that. But yeah, we always used to find somewhere new to go eat together and then go check out a restaurant. And it was just something that we did almost weekly. Oh, and it's the person that I got my first tattoo with. Yeah, there's like a lot of firsts that we did. I have to say that.
You do like Galentine's as a concept. I thought it would be cute because we're both probably going to be a little bit lonely on that day. Like her fiance has to drive across the country to come here. So he's actually leaving to come drive on Valentine's Day. Okay, we're not gonna use all of this onion. Let's just take off what we will use. If anyone is keen, you could do a tattoo show and tell in Discord. Do you guys want me to start a tattoo section for you? Can you hear that we're up? <laughs> it's always so scary. Okay, we're pressurized, so now I usually turn it down to like a medium-low heat. Show your tatties. You could do it in the fun pics for sure, I don't really care. Just if you wanted to keep them all together to maybe reference another time, it could be nice to have it organized in one spot. Here, I'll add it right now. I'll add it under fun and games. Done. It's at the bottom there. Doesn't have a symbol yet because I'm not on mobile, but it's there. So yeah, if you guys want to go share your tattoos in Discord, by all means, it's under the fun and games area. Okay, so now that that's pressurized, we're just slowly working to control the temperature a bit more. I'll set a 28 minute timer so that those last two minutes we can depressurize. And that's our 30 minutes. What the heck, Kiwi? How are you still alive after that? This is a very juicy onion. Holy smokes. I was worried about it. Now I'm not, but it looks like it's starting to sprout. No wonder they were on sale. There's always a reason, I feel. I've always actually wanted to get a stick and poke tattoo. Does anyone in here have a tattoo like that? I should have done that when I was in Thailand. I'm just gonna pick this sprout out, cause look at it. Guys, should I just start growing my own onion? I think I cut it off too far though. Food that's on sale now, Greek says, is a buy at your own risk. And that is such a like accurate statement. That's so sad that it's our reality though. <laughs> you do Kiwi, you got a Shinigami in Japan, the, or in Japan the traditional way. That's so dang cool. You keep waffling, yet it is, on whether you want tattoos or not. You have so many design ideas and you love them as a concept, but you're such a wimp when it comes to needles. I would say if that's the case, for you, it's more of like the location, let's say, and the pain you are willing to withstand. Because not every place that you get a tattoo is super, super painful. I don't know, I'm not fully covered, so I wouldn't know the places that are the best. I would say most spots that I chose to get a tattoo, very, very painful. Like Wayne, your calf wasn't painful or it was? Calf was not painful. Like if you get a tattoo on your calf, it's not painful because there's so much like muscle there, right? Armpits suck. But yeah, anywhere you go to like where it's right on the bone, or like where your skin is so like soft and delicate, it's gonna be, yeah, way more painful. Like the back of my neck, oh God, that was my first one. What the hell is wrong with me? It's like, okay, if I could do that, I can do anything. Like literally I could feel my brain like vibrating from the tattoo needle in my skull. 
I would not recommend on your foot either. Don't do that. It looks cool though. The soft flesh on the inside part of your arm, right? That's what I was saying, like anywhere like so gentle like that. Ugh, can't even imagine. Top of the foot, Kiwi. The artist in Thailand when he was doing my foot was actually getting mad at me. He's like, I need you to stop shaking your foot. I was like, I can't control this right now. That is just happening. And so there's definitely like a couple parts where you could see it got effed up. Should I just use all of this? Might as well. It's deceiving how small those are. Elbows are insane. Oh yeah, on the kneecap too. Yeah, my bro, he did his elbow. He put like a door hinge on it. Oh, I can't imagine. <gasps> Ouch. Okay, let's just get a bowl first. And it sucks because I still want to get my other foot done to match the one I have. I don't know what's with this light in today. I guess we'll just leave it. Hmm. This might be too much onion. Let's see. We could always throw a little bit of just chopped onion on top of the nachos before we bake them. But I will say when I make pico de gallo, I really cut the onion quite fine. I don't like huge chunks of it. If you see any big chunks, you can just go back over it. Right? That was a quarter of the onion cookie. And that's already almost too much for the pico de gallo amount. Same with I find almost any veggie that's in its whole form, right? Especially cabbage too. So insane. Yeah, we'll just do it up. Why not? I got lots of onion. Nice cat. The back of the hands. Yeah, I've always thought about that too, right? People are into like the ornamental ones on their fingers and stuff. I've been eyeing that up. But being a chef, I know it's not the smartest because we wash our hands so much, right? So it wouldn't last very long. So we're just gonna half and core out the stem of the tomato before we dice it up. You don't think you've ever said too much onion in this dish? I don't know, I've had some picos where it's like if you only taste onion, it's not the best. So we want to be sure to balance out those flavors. And if it looks like I'm crying a bit, it's because I am. How does the washing degrade your tattoo? Uh, it's when, it's not like the washing part, it's actually the wiping and stuff and the rubbing of your hands when you're drying off. Like, think about my foot tattoo that is always, like, in a sock and stuff. It's definitely not lasted nearly as nice as some of my other ones. That is also the other thing, too, though, I've seen with some hand tattoo artists I've been looking at. Is, yeah, it really comes with the experience and they have to get that ink into that right layer of skin.
think they're doing carpentry work upstairs today, those kids. Should order or should hire their services. Bam. You've got an L and an R on your respective left and right hands in the fleshy part by the thumbs, like here or under. Wasn't too bad. Yeah, because there's quite a bit of muscle there, right? Why can't they breed a tomato without that stupid green stubby thing? The stem, Trev? <laughs> like, come on. They're really snacking or slacking on the GMO, aren't they? The fact that we even have to cut food still. Yeah, so like that's why I was saying the ornamental style of tattoos that people are getting now, PV. You got to do your research because you want them to last. I have seen some people's like degrade within a year. Carpentry work or WrestleMania, Dust says. They might be switching between both. <laughs> what aren't the kids doing? I don't know, Bonk. I've given up. I've called the cops and they lied their way out of it. That's it for me. Okay, looks like I'm only going to be cutting these into like half the smaller ones and then dicing across. Or maybe three on the larger ones. You know what we would love to see yet it is, says an onion that doesn't make you cry. That would be handy. I used to get really annoyed by onions when they make me cry, but now it's like kind of a nice little sinus clear out. And just as we cut it, pop it into the bowl. WWF Carpenters. <laughs> now that would be a show to watch. Should we propose it for Sundays? Greek says, I think it depends on the age of the onion. I don't know. Whoa, I could barely cut through that tomato. What the heck? I was going to say, Bonk, these are all good options. Okay, these are the options that you have to go watch the game. Quiet bar with lots of TVs and good Mexican place next door. A loud bar with small TVs but good food. A small bar with only a few TVs, cheapest drinks in town, and potluck food? <gasps> that sounds fun and different. Well, what are you feeling like today, though? Do you feel like you need a lot of stimulation from the TV to have a good time? Or are you going more for the environment rather than to actually watch the game? Sharpness of knife check? I know mine needs help, Greek. That is like always the test. If you can't cut through a tomato with ease, your knife needs help. Bonk wants all of it? Well, sounds like you're gonna do a bar crawl then. Remember when that was a thing? You'd get on a bus, just get driven around to all these bars. Did that exist when you guys were younger? You can't trust everyone's cooking. You're saying like at the potluck cat. That's funny you say that actually. Because a doctor I follow on Instagram or just started following. Someone asked her. 
I don't know what the question was, whatever though. She's like, one thing I definitely don't do is eat foods at potlucks. I was like, what the hell? Maybe the people that you know are not that good of cooks. Like what? Why would you not eat food at the potluck? She's like trying to scare you to like think that you're gonna get sick off of it or something. I thought that was a weird statement though. I will tell you this though, is yeah, there has been potlucks that my family went to. And if you know how some of the people live, yeah, it's like, don't eat that dish, okay? And it's like, okay. <laughs> so there was a time, but it's only happened once or twice. And it's always been like the same person, right? We got 13 minutes on those beans. I think I'm just starting to smell them cooking. It's a good sign. The type of people need to be away from potlucks if they have the negativity. It's kind of fair though, right? Like what they're saying, you can't always trust everyone else's food. But it's like, yo, who are you hanging out with then? That's a good one too, yeah, because you guys are talking a lot about corporate work settings, which often have potlucks in the office. Just cut this into three this way. If they have a dirty office setting, then you don't eat their food if they bring anything in. That's kind of fair though, right? You have to do what you feel comfortable with. Wait, the camera went black? It's, it's you, cat. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I was like, I don't see no black screen. Okay, I'm gonna wipe up all the tomato juices. Oh no, cat! Refresh! Refresh! Get all those tomato seeds off of the cloth. Trev, you'll bring a salad, you're good. Yeah, yeah. She's back. Have no fear. Chef Samurai Rick? Thanks for that follow. Welcome. I like your username. Should we juice the lime next? I think so. I'm gonna go with this one. Press it. <laughs> See? I was wondering if you were watching, Mom. I said that in a very nice way, though, I feel. <laughs> she knows, though, what I'm talking about. Look at this. Holy. The essential oils coming out of the lime as I'm rolling it. Why is that one of the best things ever? So we roll this citrus like that to release more of the juices inside. Happy Sunday to you, Chef Samurai Rick. Welcome in. You missed what I was saying about potlucks. Oh, I just said there was only a couple times that we went to potlucks that we didn't eat someone's food. But it didn't happen often. Potlucks are something that we really liked to host when we lived in Vancouver and worked at the brewery. Because we worked with a lot of people that were the same age as us, right? And we all kind of lived in a close proximity to the work. 
So once a month, Sam and I, we would organize a potluck. We would rent out like a little, not an office room, just a little meeting space, let's say in our apartment building. That could hold up to 20 people, I think it was. And it was free to rent. And so we would often just make the proteins, like we would put something on the big green egg, right? Smoke something and then people would bring the sides. But it took a little while for everyone to really get comfortable bringing food. Like they were so scared to bring food to a potluck that like a chef was cooking at. And then we were like, we don't care what you bring. Like making something homemade for a potluck, I think is always better than like going out to buy it. Unless you're like buying different desserts or treats or stuff like that or even maybe a couple appetizer things but we always said like why are you stressing about the food you make like just keep it simple and make it good we don't care like chefs like to be cooked for every now and then too right if it's in a crock pot you'll eat it because you know it's like hot still it's been actually cooked properly <laughs> Kiwi, actually, I, I spread this out, but I think I'm going to bunch it back together first while we chop this. It's just easier for the first bit. Okay, so in Estonia, you don't really do potlucks. So let me chop this first and not my fingers. The closest thing for you is in summer, all the hardcore greasy evil bikers get support from companies and organize weekend picnics. The... The hardcore bikers organize weekend picnics. That sounds adorable. Now we can spread it out. Hey, journey of self-discovery. Welcome back. Just knows child points cooking with cannabis. Have you done this before? Do you partake in the herbage? I do partake in the herbage on the daily. We have cooked uh, with cannabis before on stream. It was years ago. And I will say it actually had a really bad like stigma on Twitch at that time. We lost like so many followers and stuff on the couple of streams that we did it. And like we were even cooking out of a cannabis cookbook, right? And people just got mad. And so we didn't do it for a while. But now I'm like, honestly, I don't really care and the stream has also changed a lot since then with our viewership and our community so that's why we added it back it's okay that's just kind of how the world was back then i mean there still is a really big stigma around it but we don't have to get into that today another cannabis friendly stream though if you've never been by there is BB Bubs, and we often raid him. I've met him in person too. Unfortunately, we did not partake together, but he's an amazing human. I think that's enough cilantro to start with, and then this is gonna be for our guac, so why don't we just put that in another bowl? Thank you for doing that shout out, Bonk. <laughs> You did last night with some random Mexican dudes you met at the gas station, Kiwi. They were really cool. And they wanted to learn Estonian. I could definitely see you being that person to make friends everywhere. Yeah, you'll either make friends or you're scared of the old ladies. There's no in between. Thank you, Journey. This is kind of how I always am. I got pretty chill vibes. I do get told that often too, like when people meet me for the first time. But I will say there are times when I'm not chill. Mostly if people just make me upset though. And even then I'm like almost always too nice still. Yum mom. 
Trisha's ribs recipe with super tough strip steaks from Costco. That should be interesting. Like you're slow cooking the strip steak. Keep all that good fat on there. Yeah, right? Most people get unchill when people peeve them. <laughs> it's natural. Okay, just gonna put this to the side for now. We need salt and pepper to season this and then we'll mix it up. I think I'm with you on that too, Bonk. Like, I don't really drink alcohol anymore. Definitely use cannabis a lot more. But I think I'm the same. Is like, if you try and use it in a social setting, it, I guess it also depends on the strain that you're using and like the turps in it and stuff. But sometimes, yeah, I don't, I just kind of like get a little shut down. Or maybe just too relaxed that you just don't really care about what's happening around you. <laughs> but yeah, I've been really dialing back my use of it. And I have to say, I've, I've been having more energy. That plus not having coffee is you just realize how much you were stimulating your body and it didn't need that. Yeah, that too. Don't, don't like mix your booze with uh, THC. No, no, no. I learned that the hard way when I was really young. Not really young. In my teens, but still. I didn't touch it again until almost 10 years afterwards. So there's that. Mmm, this looks good. A good little bite with everything. Yeah, my mom, my parents had to come rescue me. Mmm. It's got everything. Every time I make this on stream, I try to just make it and taste it once. I think I'll do just a little bit more salt, but like the crunchy onion flavor, the cilantro, the tangy lime juice. The tomato's kind of sweet. Your guys' stories. <laughs> Bringing me back. We'll have one more taste. We should be good. And then we'll just put that in the fridge. been trying the SBD or CBD derp. Also, hi, how are you doing? That's it. That's the flavor. We did it. I will say those limes are very delicious tasting, very limey. Yeah, CBD. So you're saying it works really good? Dave, I have heard that too. Especially for sleeping, right? If you have a little hard time falling asleep, that sucks. Like I hate just laying there, right? It's like, okay, I know I should be sleeping, but I'm so wide awake. That was our timer for the beans. So let's pop this off. 
And I always just take it off of the burner right away. Let it sit for a couple seconds and then we'll start to depressurize it. Yeah, same here, Vonk. You're really chill and giggly when you're elevated, cat. I think that only happens if I have mushrooms. But then I have to be like really intentional of how I use those. Boom, chat. Mom's saying it. She's coming out. She says she tried the CBD drops for bedtime. But the one-to-one -one CBD to THC gummies are better. There you have it. The secret is out. <laughs> Scooter, just coming in here. Guys, I've never tried any of those things. Also, what are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so we're going to turn this top notch. And that's what's going to happen. Splode. Be careful, don't burn yourself with the steam. It's not a secret, I know, I'm just bugging. It helps people to know that kind of stuff though. Not everyone is also okay talking about it. Cause you do get judged. You do get judged and you get called a stoner. Okay, so next up, we're gonna make our guac. This was the hardest part of stream, cooking the beans. Exactly, Vong, right? It's 2024, who cares? Always oh, sounds like a jet landing. Boom. We have been released. Ow. The steam is hot. Mmm. It smells good and we can't see nothing. Let me get a slotted spoon. I don't know yet whether I'm gonna save those juices. It could be good to me to make a soup or something with. Nice, it's all cooked. Mmm. Mmm. Why when you cook dried beans, the texture is so much better and like buttery. Why is that the case? Oh, my strainer's in the dishwasher. So we're gonna strain that out. But I think I might keep that juice. I haven't decided what I'm gonna use it with yet. Do shots of bean juice? Why do you want me to fart my face off still? You bean fiend. <laughs> Make it into a veggie broth, right? I was thinking like maybe a, a tortilla soup or something this week. Cause I'll have extra chicken left over. Pop it in there with our extra beans, crush up tortilla chips, dollop of pico, sour cream, guac. Eat the heck out of that. Yes, please. Hey, it's Johnny Radden. I heard nachos on the hub of the universe and here I am. Nice, you got your munchies ready too? Perfect. <laughs> there we have it. I would say that is our $3 worth of canned beans. 
for 50 cents. You're welcome. We'll just let those cool on the side. Shots of bean broth sounds gross. Have we done weirder stuff here? Maybe. The duck fat whiskey shot was a pretty interesting one. Also really good, actually. Okay, guac time. We have our cilantro pre-cut. I actually don't ever put onion into my guacamole, but if you guys want to, you can. Shots of hot sauce we did. We did that. What, Sam's done a full shot of maple syrup before. What else did I blindfold taste? Oh, those were fun ones too, Greek. Yeah, those were fun times as well. Okay, let's get all of our dragon eggs. How many are we gonna use? I'm honestly thinking these three to start. I'm gonna go four. I always just pick the stem out if it's still sitting in the top there because the knife doesn't really go through it well. Wait, what is our stoner snack? I need to scroll up. Bowl of Tillamook vanilla ice cream with Reese's Puffs. That would be good. Oh, Tillamook. It's been years. It's been too long. You guys love your fruity pebbles. It's a delight. I'm trying to even think if we have it here in the stores. Look at these avos, guys. Couldn't be more beautiful. Look at that. We went four for four, but look at how big that pit is, excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Black cherry ice cream with choco chunks in it. Mmm. Oh, there goes the pit. Hello? One of my threats sometimes at work to people is don't make me put an avocado pit in a sock. That is like seriously a weapon. <laughs> I'll beat ya. Slightly salty pistachio ice cream. I'm really happy I get to have these nachos because you guys are making me hungry today. Yeah, you will learn, Michael, that me in like a work environment out of control like the most in control but then there's moments completely crazy <laughs> i 
Like, I'm either super professional or not at all. There is no in-between. <laughs> you did it, Nike. Yeah, you started that fire. So I just usually chunk the avos to scoop them because it makes it easier to smash them up into the guacamole. Oh man, Kiwi, you must be dying in America. You don't like sweet stuff? Well, I hope you like salty stuff then. <laughs> That's a lot of avo. I'm making enough for a couple days. For myself, I'll use it up. I got 10 avos for $10. Can't let it go to waste. Hello, Crazy Alice's mom. How are you? Scoop it. Get all the goodness out. You ever have the avos? Like, this is a really hard piece in there that you can't scoop it out. Some of the avocados are kind of mutant, I find. Aren't we all, though? Don't we all have a couple blemishes? Oh yeah, we were talking about that the other day. How sweet and sugary Korean food is. People don't realize it. They're definitely, they play with the sweet and spicy flavor. I will say that. They are very good at playing around with those ones. I was gonna, I was just thinking that Greek, like, but the kimchi though. <laughs> That's hilarious. Don't really like avos, but when you have a party or something and make guac, you run most of it through a ricer. Nice. That's a great way to do it too. That's like how I would make egg salad for 5 billion people. Is just push the eggs through like a mesh wire rack. Way easier. Avocados by themselves, I find are really fatty. Like it's hard to eat on its own. I had one the other morning just with a bit of seasoning on it. With like some other things I had for breakfast and it was almost too rich and fatty for first thing in the morning. I really found I needed to cut through that richness. Okay, I'll hold on to this spoon, but usually I smash the avo with either a fork or a potato masher. That's true, yeah, even the bulgogi has that sweetness to it. Let's see how this goes with a fork. They seem really nice and ripe. Like usually I'll kind of mash them before I put the lime juice in. Otherwise it kind of splashes all over. And I like my guac a bit chunky, not super, super smooth. So you can make yours however you want. <laughs> Greek. <laughs> we inspired Greek to go smoke a bowl. That looks so delicious already. Okay, our half lime is here. Let's squeeze that. That might be enough because it's pretty juicy. Secret for egg salad or your version? 
is called egg butter. What are you making, Kiwi? Same thing almost. You use a dough hook in the KitchenAid. Doesn't break it up too much, but makes it so you can spread it on bread. Interesting. It's a very pulpy lime. Look at this. I do add more flavorings to this though than just salt and pepper. So I usually do hot sauce and it's our homemade chipotle buffalo. So it also has garlic, lime juice, cumin in it, uh, granulated garlic. Rather than fresh garlic, because I find sometimes fresh garlic can be too overpowering. You made a dump cake last night and just had some for breakfast. I remember we made one of those before on stream. Peach, blueberry, and cherry. Yum. Greeks baked and his mother-in-law's cooking in the kitchen. Lucky duck. She's making samosas. What the hell? I'm coming over. Butter chicken and chicken or chicken tikka or red dal. All of the above. You agree, Siren, for the garlic on the guac? Yeah, I've I've went between the two doing fresh versus just the granular. And the granular actually is better. And I don't often say that, right? I don't usually go too crazy with the hot sauce because it'll mess up the color of the guacamole. Your favorite breakfast kiwi, warm Karelian pies with fresh egg butter. What is a Karelian pie? Greek, if it's all of the above, then you're living life today. The roasted garlic spread on toasted bread or baked naan. Lots of people do that. It's quite popular. I feel like we might need more lime juice, but let's taste it first. I like how that's mixing together though. You have frozen Trader Joe's samosas. Hey, that could work in a pinch. When she cooks, she cooks Greek. Oh, I know what you mean. Hmm. Close to the flavor. I think I'll do a bit more lime juice. I was deciding there. Guac needs some cumin. I don't like love cumin as a spice. I feel like I, I've worked in some restaurants before though that overused it. And now I feel that way, right? Because oftentimes when I use it, it's just like, that's all that I taste. I don't know why that is. Everyone's palate's different, I suppose. But there is a uh, cumin inside of the hot sauce. I know you're not gonna get much. A Karelian pie is a small pastry made from something like a thin rye tortilla made into like a little canoe filled with a salty rice porridge or potato stuffed or even carrot stuffed, like mashed, you're saying? Mash those things and stuff it into the tortilla. 
But you only like the rice one, though. I've never seen anything like that. At first, the way you were describing it, I thought you were going to say it's like Hachapuri. The Georgian cheese bread. But no, that's different. Oh no! <laughs> what did he say? What did he do, guys? I needed to add some more salt as well as the lime. Because I just felt like this was lacking in flavor. Ripper Rooney. Good job, Bonk. Were you just clearing the chat? Oh, it's called a Karelian pasty. So it is kind of similar then to a Hachapuri. Oh, wait, does it auto ban now if someone posts a link? I didn't put this setting on. Does it just auto ban? What the hell is going on here? Because that happened to someone else the other week. Like I said, though, I don't have this. Like, I've never put that setting on. So if someone else did, whoa, that spoon is way too large to taste with. Oh, yeah, because Kat posted. Yeah, maybe a non-sub. Okay, now I have to go look at it. I'm deciding on the flavor. A little bit more garlic and then we're good. This is looking and tasting proper. It's a spam protection. Well, welcome back. We love you too, Nike. I'm always happy when you stop by. Okay. I'm gonna pop this away. Anything else to go that way? Nope. And we are going to shred our chicken next. The cheese after that, and it's almost time. Greek's like, let's just save that from happening next time, and we're gifting a sub to KVP to the channel. Thanks, Greek. That's very generous of you. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Kiwi. Sorry that happened. Yeah, okay, so let's, let's make an experiment. Try posting the link again now that you're subbed and see if you get banned. Don't worry, it's not a forever thing. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Bong's ready. His eyes twitching. Boom. Okay, now we know. So no links posted by non-subs. The things you learn about your stream after six years. <laughs> That's our guac. Very nice and green color still. It's seasoned well. I think I'm going to switch out the fork though now to the spoon. We'll just pop that in the fridge. Get our chicken out. Get our cheese out. It's almost nacho assembly time. It's sus. Yeah. <laughs> it's protecting us, we could say. Our green onions we still need to cut up. So I'll take that out. Can I even fit all this in here? The answer is yes. Oh, I added the lime. I added an entire lime actually juiced. I'm 
very limey. Hello, Chaotic Good Mage. Yeah, we added half and then we tasted it and I was like, it's kind of lacking in flavor. So then we added the other half and now it's perfect. Yeah, we were talking about how just having avocado by itself can sometimes be overpowering with the richness of the fat. Always try and cut it with a bit of acidity, whatever it is. Oh, you just got in? No problem, dude. I always peel these layers off the bottom of the green onion. So I always find there's like dirt hiding in there. You could also wash it off too if it's not peeling off very easily. And then we'll just trim this up where it's looking not so nice. You want to try cooking more with avocado oil? I will admit, I've never purchased avocado oil. I think that actually is better with the lighting. I don't know yet. This looks weird today. Can't balance it. It happens. Wait, you've never bought it either? And I actually know people that primarily just use avocado oil. But I've never used it. I've just always been an olive oil girl or grapeseed oil. Just pop those in a little container for now. Yes. Yeah, avocado oil has the highest smoke point, which we would never assume that, right? Kind of crazy. You're also an olive oil girly. <laughs> you just now branched out to canola. Interesting. And I myself have just given up canola or in the process of that not trying to use it as much switching more to using animal fats for cooking so rendering my own pork lard and stuff like that whoa that onion went flying So Kat, since you use avocado oil, do you find a difference using it compared to other oils? Or you can't really tell? For those of us that have never used it. <laughs> right, Bonk? They just go flying everywhere. And then I always wipe it right after we cut that. I was like, that onion smells in there, but I will say it smells more like lime still. So this is our rotisserie chicken. I will admit, so I've already eaten one whole chicken breast from this, both of the tenders and like half of this chicken breast. And that's still how much meat I have left from the chicken. I'm just gonna grab a cutting board. I'll probably just dice up a bunch of those meat pieces. I have seen a trick online and let me know if any of you guys have tried this before for shredding chicken is they say you could do it in a stand mixer. Has anyone ever done that? So I'm just gonna pick out what I feel like we'll use today. OK, 
cat says you gotta cut off the onion legs. What? So they don't run away? You've used your hand mixer with a paddle. Do you find that it actually saved you time? Or was it more cleanup afterwards because you had to put the mixer away and stuff? Trying to determine how much chicken I need for these nachos. That's probably good. Like, that's probably more than they give you in a restaurant if you do the, what, $8 chicken add-on to your nachos. That's probably double what they put on. It did save time, you found? Cool. That's good to know. I always thought it looked so funny. And I'm just not someone that makes a lot of shredded chicken, I guess. So I need to know. I got questions. Hey, Plasma Badger. It has been long. Happy cooking. Thank you. I hope you're doing good. Okay, so we're just going to roughly cut this up. And one note on shredding chicken, it is easier to do that while the chicken is warm still rather than it being cold, which is the reason why I'm cutting it. But yeah, when the chicken is still warm, it's really easy to work with and pull apart. Pop that in a little bowl. We will shred our cheese next, and then I think we just have to get our pickled jalapenos out and we can assemble. And then let me ask you guys this, when you make nachos at home, do you actually turn on the oven to bake or do you just do it under the broiler? Because there's a bunch of different recipes out there. I think the best way is actually the oven, not the broiler, because you risk burning the chips quicker if you just do it under the broiler. And you don't want actually a super duper hot oven either, because things kind of get dried out and weird. The microwave Katniss. I am not opposed to a microwave nacho, and I will also not deny that I have made that before. You bake it for like 15 minutes at 250 to 300. Yeah, so not a high temp, right? Because we're just really trying to melt that cheese. There has been times where if they over bake the nachos, there's almost no substance left to the cheese and it's just super crispy, right? I don't find that's the best when that happens. You gotta have a little bit of cheese pull still. This is probably not the best cheese either to use today, I will say, because it's aged. Like if I had a marble cheese or even just a medium cheddar would be better. So let's keep that in mind too. Don't overbake the cheese. Crispier chips are good though. And that's also why you'll see I don't actually put tomatoes on the nachos or anything really wet like that because I find it always makes the chips soggy. Whereas I'd rather just be able to like dip my chip into the salsa. Or after the nachos are fully baked, you can spoon the pico de gallo on the very top. Options. Mish, you would. Okay, I'm just gonna shred it off of the block again, like yesterday, because that worked really good. I've never had nachos with feta, but I will tell you this story about guacamole. In San Diego, the first time that we went for TwitchCon, was that in 2018? I can't even remember what year it was. 
But anyways, we went to San Diego for TwitchCon, and Sam and myself, we went to this Mexican restaurant. I forget what it's called now, because it still exists there. And they make their guac with chunks of queso on top. Like they just dice up chunks of cheese and you like eat your guac with the cheese. Oh man, it was the craziest guacamole ever, but it like tasted like feta cheese. The cheese was really similar to feta. So that's why I told you that story. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Greek redo. <laughs> Maybe it was Cotilla. I don't really know my Mexican cheese is that good. A shark. We got Misha good. <laughs> We're having a slap war in chat. This is actually kind of hilarious. Nice. Bonk's just throwing it down. A magic harp? Where's the Pokeball? Get it! Need to evolve my Gyarados. <laughs> I don't measure cheese for nachos. I just shred a bunch and then you distribute it. Whatever you shred, you have to use. That's the rule though. I think we're getting there. Where is he, Mish? You still miss Bob even after last night? Also, did you guys love that disgusting meme photo I posted on the food? I thought that looked so gross. This is true Greek. One would never think this. Nor do we like even saying these words. But if you put too much cheese on the nachos, yeah, it could make the chips soggy. I will say like the best... What? You got to do a mix of cheeses for nachos, right? You need an orange one and usually a white one. Even if you just mix it with some mozzarella for that cheese pull and melting. Meltability. See, Bob is here. He's lurking, just watching the slap fight. I knew it. Not everyone can be available to us at all times, chat, okay? They also have lives. Mmm, pepper jack, yes. Oh, imagine like a jalapeno Havarti. What the heck? <laughs> You're the best worst friend I've ever had. <laughs> I'm just gonna put the cheese in a container. You gotta make room for the nacho tray. I'm gonna scoop it up with the bench scraper because that's the easiest. Habanero cheddar, Nike says. I mean, there's options. How many cheeses do we even think exist in the world? Is it thousands? I think there's probably hundreds. Probably not thousands. I don't know this though. Thousands, Bong thinks? Cat says at least six cheeses. Cheese. Cheesy. 1500? That's actually the answer? Over that. Oh, over it. So I guess we could say thousands. We could put the S on the end of it. <laughs> this 
thousands of cheeses, but only one Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar. I always say that too, Cat. Jesus Rice. Okay, what else? I think we're ready. I'm just looking at the recipe I linked. <gasps> On the recipe? She microwaves them. <sighs> Pioneer woman. The judgment is very high here right now. Microwave in 45 second increments until the cheese is melted and bubbly. In brackets though, you may also place the platter in a 325 Fahrenheit oven. Just leave it until the cheese is melted. That's all she says. Just leave it in there till the cheese is melted. Give us a timing. So she's never made oven nachos then. <gasps> what? Microwave. <laughs> she doesn't even know how long it takes. Yes, don't forget to lower that microwave power if you do. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go, we will put our oven at 325 and then like Greek says, sometimes it takes around like 10, 15 minutes, right? We're not going super high on the heat so the cheese is not gonna melt really quick. And that's just so that we don't burn the chips at the same time. She's a fraud. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm gonna get my sheet pan. We'll get it lined up. I always foil the sheet pan for nachos. This will save your life for cleaning up afterwards because all that melted cheese will stick onto the pan and it's just a nightmare. So we'll probably even just do the layer of foil and then parchment because a lot of times I find when you build your nachos on foil the cheese sometimes sticks and then you get sad when the crispy cheese bits are stuck on the foil microwaving softens the chips I will say that right I can't remember the last time I microwaved nachos, but I was in my teens. And it definitely makes the chips soggier. Hey, the more you know, right? And then while they're baking, all we're gonna do is mix up our sour cream, distribute our salsa and guac into the bowls for serving, and then we're good to go. Easy peasy. Microwaving is all about exciting the water molecules, thus steaming the food. Okay, and then while we're doing this, get this turned on. Perfect. Do I follow Little Mountain Ranch on YouTube? No, but I will now. I don't need my phone anymore, so I'll go subscribe to her right now. That's seriously all I watch for TV now, is I just watch YouTube. Yo, my phone died, I think. <laughs> I won't do it. Yellow. She's how you imagine Sam and I are gonna be. Oh man, okay, so yesterday, did you guys see that one link I posted from TikTok, the farm in Manitoba? Sam actually found that, but I posted it on my Facebook. I was like, I want to live here. And then my grandma replied. She's like, seriously, why? <laughs> And so then I replied back to her. I was like, because it's a fully set up hobby farm and that's what I want to do in the future. And I just said, why not? I'm like starting a war with my grandma on Facebook. 
I'm gonna get so in shit. She started it though first. <laughs> yeah, we don't have cable either, guys. Your monitor is the TV. That's basically what I do. Because Sam's monitor is really good. You have so many TVs in your house, Scoots. But yeah, you watch a lot of sports. That's true. That's different. There's always sports on. And you don't want to miss it, right? So that's why you have TVs in every room. Okay, so this layer of parchment should help us from the cheese sticking so much. And multiple TVs for multiple Twitch streams. I love the commitment. That's amazing. Yeah, let's be honest, boss man. Grandma's gonna win the war. I've already lost. Why did I even say anything? Because I need to see. I don't like being judged about how I live my life. So I wanted to see her side of what she was feeling and thinking. Okay, so my tortilla chippies were on sale at the store this week. Two bags for $7, which is like an okay price. But I will say I got the better brand that I really like. So organic, I always get the que pasa because it is a stone ground corn tortilla chip and so i got the red ones and then uh, just the plain ones so i'll do a mix of them wayne are you having notching toes he says no so they're all for me cat and yeah i just think this is a better quality than the tostito brands or some other ones that are out there because it's organic whole kernel corn. Nothing's been stripped off of it. That's all I got. And I like the flavor and the texture of them too. Maybe I also like these because I find they hold up a little bit better. Like Tostitos I find break really easily if you use them for dipping and stuff. These have good structure. Let's open this up. Also like how nice the bags open. Spike 40 times. Thank you for that follow. Look at how neat that is. I also saw they made a different variety of these from the brand that's a thin and crispy version. I mean, I didn't buy it because I thought that would be really bad for making nachos with, but I was intrigued by that. Trev, you try to find the thinnest tortillas. You like them to go soft when cooking. Interesting. I mean, we all like different stuff. Let me in. It wasn't letting me in. Blue corn is good too. The thin crispy ones are the best for salsa, right? Cause you just have a little bit of chip then with the salsa and then you don't get overly filled up on the chippies. So we're gonna make some layers, guys. I'm gonna just do two layers for myself today. These are not so bad left over though, I will say. Let's um save the microwaving of the nachos for the reheat of the leftovers the next day. That's kind of the only time when that's okay. But even then, I'd probably just put it back into a low heat oven to heat it back up. Well, there's no way I'm gonna eat all this by myself today, but I don't wanna make a small amount either, right?
mix your chippies together. What? Okay, if we need help, Wayne's here, guys. We talked him into it. I mean, who can really pass up nachos if there's extras? So we spread them all out to one pretty nice, even layer. Don't let too much gaps, though, either. Kind of keep it compact. Like that. Nice. I need to move this up a bit for you guys. You have leftover nachos, Nike, because you make enough to feed a hill giant. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so first things, what? I usually do a little layer of cheese sprinkled first to kind of adhere all of your things. And then we can do more cheese afterwards. It is kind of a travesty when you have leftover nachos. Like, did I do something wrong? Why is there leftovers? Heading out for a walk? No, it's raining today. Dang. Well, have a good walk. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Okay, next up, I think I want to do the chicken. Some people's vehicles, I don't even know how they're running the way that they sound when they drive by. <laughs> Sounded like a Jetson spaceship. So we try to distribute if we're gonna make two layers, just distribute all your ingredients in half, right? Did you hear it, Greek? It seriously sounded hilarious. I don't even know what kind of vehicle that would have been. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Was it a car? Was it a spaceship? We'll never know. Okay, next I'm gonna do the beans. I'm just gonna bring the strainer over that they've been cooling in. I mean, I wouldn't put it past being a motorbike. Sounded like a souped-up Honda Accord. To you guys, it did. Sounded like it was sucking air or something. Like the filter was clogged? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, once upon a time, we were those people with the very loud ass car. No matter if we thought it sounded amazing, right? That was still us. I never said a Honda Accord was bad, Scoots. Don't you be taking that personally. <laughs> but let's be honest, every time there is a fart can, it's often a Honda. It gets a bad rap, we can't help it. <laughs> We're hilarious. We can come a bit closer now. We got it dialed up. Hey, is there anything else I need to put on here? Oh, our pickled jalapeno. I just kept it in the fridge until now. We're gonna spice up our life. Yeah, the type of people take off their muffler, add the fart can. It's what is known. Trev says the Honda Accord is the most purchased car in America, lasts forever, and it's cheap. I mean, that's what I remember my grandpa driving. That's all he would buy. Honda Accords. 
Oh, it got too old? Oh, another Honda Accord. <laughs> yeah, unless your car actually has proper mods done to it, do not put an exhaust on it. Just don't. You'll save everyone. Their peace. But I do find that pickle jalapenos aren't super spicy. That's why we can go kind of crazy with them. Okay, now we're gonna go more cheese. Cover it up. You have a Chevy Silverado checker? Nice. Bonk, you got a Chivic? Oh, also that too, Trev, good one. You're gonna fail inspection with a modded exhaust. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the reason why we got rid of our car is because they started ticketing people here without even a decibel reader, they'd hand out like just a $2,000 ticket. Oh, your car sounds too loud. Okay, first layer. You're on your third Prius? Let's go. I love that cat. I'm doing really good today, Trekker. We're having a fun stream, I have to say. Yeah, Hondas last forever, hey guys? And so I'm gonna put this on the top rack of the oven too. So that's the closest to the heat element. Did they call you a Prius prick? You're hanging with mom and just got back from a walk. Yeah, the sun. The sun came out today. It wasn't supposed to be this nice. I can't wait to go outside. Can't wait. Okay, let's get some bowls for our condiments, our dips. The Prius, it used to be too tall and would sway in the wind, Trev, so you never got one. That would be so scary. I mean, I often see the Delica, those vans that are imported, just the way that they're designed, they have a huge sway on them. I could never imagine driving that and feeling it. Please, no dying. Mm. Mm. No sun for you today, Trekker. I think that's going to be us these next three days, so I'm really going to take advantage of it. When it's windy, you're getting blown all over, cat. What? You're just like, I'm on a wild ride. Woo woo. Just have fun with it. <laughs> Trev would poop his pants. <laughs> Greek, the Delicas. They're so dang cool though. There's so many in BC. So many. That and Forerunners. That's all you'll see on the island. Get 
Get the creme de sir. They're really cool off-roaders. Yeah, I've never seen one driving off-road yet. I'm sure that would be really cool to see. Almost there. I'm making you want nachos. If you can buy all this stuff for nachos on sale, then it doesn't cost too much to make at home. But if you don't have like any of the ingredients for nachos in the house and you go to make them, it can get expensive really quick. I don't know how much it is to buy like a jar of salsa or anything anymore. But I can't imagine it's cheap. Ten dollars for three Greek? Greek, go to save on foods. I don't know if it's the same in BC, but I got ten avos for ten bucks. You gotta shop at save on. Salsa is like four bucks. Okay, that's not too bad then. Yeah, I could have got two bags of Tostitos chips or the two bags of the organic ones. Well, you know which one I'm going to choose. That's definitely enough sour cream. You prefer to say salsa is slasa? <laughs> I've never heard of that one. You save one of my recipes for a layered bean dip and you make it once a month. Yum. Which one is it, Trekker? Is it the refried ones? Okay, that layer of nachos is probably good and we can work on the next one. Oh yeah, yeah. It looks good. It also smells really good. Okay, so careful we don't touch the pan because it's really hot. Maybe I'll just leave the cloth there as a reminder. So we don't want to take too much time to build the second layer. Because then it's going to start to cool off again, right? I have seen, Greek, that, yeah, jalapenos are quite expensive now to buy fresh. That's why I often just have the pickled ones in the house. So yeah, you're trying to add up if you were to go buy all the ingredients from scratch to make this, it'd be like 60 bucks. That's insane. So I remember, yeah, we'd often like kind of get a hankering for nachos in Vancouver after work. There was one time we were like, hey, we're going to go to the store and we're going to get everything to buy nachos. And then we got everything in the cart and we're like, this is going to cost us like 40 bucks just to make nachos. And so we just put everything back and went home. We always have to layer the nachos. This is an important part that most people are not aware of. And so I always have to show you guys the best way it should be done. It's a need to know sort of thing. Because then you can judge the next nachos that you go out to eat. We got to shingle the chips. That actually almost looks too perfect. I didn't even try to, but there's some kind of design going on here. Oopsies. This would be 25 bucks in a restaurant, Greek. That's what I think the price of nachos is still, hey? I tried to look 
at the price at somewhere like Central Social Hall or something. But then I didn't carry on with that. Right, is a lot of times I also find now is in a restaurant, the nachos don't come with meat. So then you have to add the meat on afterwards. So then, yeah, it's always closer to 30 bucks by the time you do that. You guesstimated the same price, Katniss? Oh yeah, you did up there. So it's kind of the same price throughout North America, then we can say. I don't know if we have, do we have any Europeans in here still? Because I can see this not really being popular in Europe, but I don't know. Just rinsing my bean hands. Yeah, I got the limes four limes for three bucks, which was such a good deal. Great bunk, nachos are more of an American thing. And then just because us Canadians are in proximity, we also get to enjoy the American foods. We definitely enjoy way more American foods than you guys eat Canadian foods. Let's say that. I'm not putting jalapenos on this layer. Oops. Right, Katniss? And so I've often been asked that on stream too, is what kind of foods do Canadians eat? And I always say it's a really hard question to answer because Canada is so big that it really depends on where you live, I would say. Because they eat different food out east compared to what we eat in the west here. Maybe Greek has a better answer than me because I've lived here my whole life. Okay, going in. <laughs> and I usually find the second layer doesn't take as long. Make sure you watch. Okay, while we're waiting, I'm just gonna put a couple of things away. We already have all the condiments ready in the bowls. Got extra onion and lime. Put that in a container. Yeah, regions definitely have variations, right? Greek is saying a lot of Ukrainian food. But yeah, US has their regional foods too. I think like the farther west you get in Canada, kind of the more ethnic foods you have, let's say. Because that's where a lot of the immigrants are coming from, right? So a lot of like Asian influence, Indian influence from that way, because they come in from the Western side of Canada. And I often say this is there's not a lot of Mexican food in Canada. It's slowly becoming more popular. But when I was first growing up here, like I helped open the first taqueria ever in this city, which is pretty crazy. And now it's also sad because it doesn't exist anymore. And then let's also say, so the farther away from the cities you get, I think the more people live off the land and eat more wild game meats and stuff like that, right? They don't eat those ethnic foods like how we do. And then I would say Greek being in Alberta has a very high population 
especially just in Edmonton, but even like if you go north and around of, yeah, Ukrainian and Polish people, like that's what half of my heritage is. Cat, you're deep south, big on cooked greens, meats, and starches, New England, where the coast, seafood, fresh veggies, California, Mexican, Asian. It's so interesting, and that is a really fun part about traveling, is experiencing all the different foods. And that's why I really like to travel. Out east, there's more ethnic. Are you saying more Toronto though? Because east to me is like the coast, like Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, PEI, stuff like that. But yeah, anytime we're near the coast, there's always going to be a lot more influence on seafood. Just makes sense, right? But yeah, anywhere that there's a big hub or a big city, there's a lot of ethnic influence. Wrap up our green onions and then I'll check on that cheese to see how melted it is. Yeah, see, that's our journey of self-discovery is. There's lots of ethnic foods and cultures. That was one of my favorite things living in Vancouver. You could just walk down the street and go like walk into anywhere and have the greatest experience. And the food wasn't even that expensive. The boss man, are the nachos ready, Kate? I'm ready to stop by. I think they actually might be. Let's see. Like one more moment, just a bit more melty. Pass the plate and nachos. Are we even gonna put them on a plate? I usually just eat it off the tray. How do you guys usually eat nachos? If you make it at home, let's say, cause you're always served it family style in the restaurant, just the platter where everyone takes off of it. That's how I like to eat it too, or just put yeah, the whole platter down on the table in front of everyone and you can take what you want from it. Your nachos take about 15 minutes. You like the cheese to caramelize. You like it really crispy. Bob, please. He says, Kate, I like nachos. I like to eat my nachos with my fingers. Imagine eating them with a fork and knife. That would be a challenge. Hey, Colin. Perfect for the sports ball game that Taylor Swift will be at. The Swifties are going nuts today. You usually just do your own plates and then go to the table, but it's just you and your hubby. Oh, if it's just you and your hubby, you'll eat it off the pan. True. You've actually eaten nachos with a fork? <laughs> Good one self-discovery probably just eat it off the tray to save dishes that's the greatest suggestion i like my cheese more stringy than caramelized licking the cheese oils off of your fingers i love it guys we could have went i think even more cheesy but the underlayer has quite a bit of cheese on it. So let me just get our condiments on this side. I'll take a quick photo and we get to eat. Another reason why I like these three condiments is because they're the color of the Mexican flag too, right? The green, white, and red.
Mm. What's wrong with feta in the nachos? What the heck? I tried to open my camera and it wouldn't even give me the option. Bob left. He doesn't exist anymore, Mish. You're on your own. Isn't feta Greek? Yes. Yes, it is. Don't ask me what the Danes are doing with it over there. <laughs> okay, guys. Where's the most perfect bite? This one looks pretty good. We got the chicken and the beans and the cheese. For my first bite, I think I'll just spoon our condiments over top. I think I just want to go with the salsa. Go playing with the salsa. We'll take a bite with each condiment and see what we feel is the best. Sometimes it falls off. Sometimes I would put a layer of sour cream first to adhere it. Mm. This was needed. This is very like nourishing feeling. The chips are so good and crunchy. Ah. I got lots, guys. Come on over. The guac is better than the salsa. What the heck? That's funny you just asked that, Greek. I really like the lime flavor in the guac. Okay, I often like to do this mix, like I said, of this sour cream and then some pico. Ah, it's okay if some tomatoes fall on it. It won't die. Mmm. Sour cream is the best. Why? The jalapeno's hiding. It's on the under layer. I just need to find one. Look. I just did pickled jalapenos. There's just little rounds like that. Because fresh jalapenos are so dang expensive. I don't know if it's just a chef thing, but sometimes when I'm at this store, I'm like, I'm not paying that for that. Get wrecked. And then I just don't buy the thing. <laughs> and so that's what happens when you eat nachos. As it gets kind of messy. I mean, something to be known when you eat with your hands. But I will tell you that personally, I love eating with my hands. I'm the poor person that has to get forced to eat cut or use cutlery when they eat. Like it's fun to look at the tray and be like, I want that chip. Have you ever done this too? When you're eating nachos with somebody and you both go for the same chip, a war is started. Samo and I have done that before. I think I won though, cause I was really quick. <laughs> you gotta claim your nacho territory. That's usually kind of, it is known, right? You stick within your nacho territory on the pan. If there's four people, you just divide it where you're sitting. <laughs> yeah. 
Don't we all go for the best loaded chips, though? Those are some of the best avocados I've eaten in so long. Oh my god. I'm going nuts for that guac, you guys. Okay, this one looks so good, how it's like nestled. The chip's kind of curved. What is the time even? Nice. We got, what, two hours till the game? Two hours still? We like the tactile experience while eating, Crazy Alice says. Yes, we do. You don't fight over the nachos, Trev. If you touch it, the other person lost. I like that. Oh, I didn't even, like, post a guac recipe. I just make it how I always do, but I'll write it down. I'll post it for you, Trek it. It's really simple. Okay, what are some other things that we've had on nachos before? I was trying to think. I, in my family, we would do like the canned black olives on there. I was trying to think if I've ever had peppers on nachos. I don't think so. Oh yeah, the pregame, that's right. I have heard, Colin, that the nachos at Brew House are pretty killer. They serve it in a keg top. What? I will say I've never had black beans with nachos before and I'm really liking it. Like you don't really know they're there. It's a good filler. You like the olives on this side? I think it's definitely much more traditional Mexican to not have the olives, right? But if you like them, do it up. Mmm. Shredded lettuce, nice. Pickled onions, you guys. I do have that, I should have put it. I'm so satisfied and happy. I know we inspired you today. And thank you, Michael, for posting the screenshots from today's stream. <sighs> we did it. We made it through another weekend. We're ready to go relax the rest of the day. So, Bonk, you decided you're going to go to the place with the Mexican spot beside it because of the nachos? Are you thinking you're going to order nachos or are you going to get something else? Now you got to go get nacho supplies. I will be in a nacho coma. I only had like, what, six chippies so far? It's something that you have to like sit down and eat though. Hard to eat and talk. Nachos or you want a really good burrito. Oh my gosh. Best burrito I ever had was in San Diego. I might have got harassed outside the restaurant first and started crying, but it was worth it, let me tell you. <laughs> it's your turn to cook family dinner on Saturday. You're online shopping, getting the ingredients to make the nachos. Sweet! I did my duty then, we can say. <laughs> my random little tidbit stories. It's like, what the heck, Kate? <laughs> ah, what? I just opened up the Twitch page and there's like a girl in lingerie. She says dancing maid question mark. I was not prepared for that. Greek, yeah. <laughs> Bonk, 
Best Mexican food available outside of Mexico. I think that's actually true. I will I will give you that one because even yeah, even the tacos I had there. We don't have anything like that up here. It's close, but it's just not it. It just ain't it. Okay, I'm looking who we're gonna go raid. You guys know the deal. Minnesota Taz is on. One of my favorite humans. He's making chicken pot pie too. I know that's something that we have to make coming up. So let's go raid him. You're planning on TwitchCon 2024? Let's eat. Excuse me also if you heard those belts of approval for the chef. I just need to get my keyboard up here. I don't know yet if we're planning TwitchCon this year because we want to do Europe in the summer. I wasn't expecting Samo to actually say that in Discord. That was kind of surprised to me to say that he's like planning a honeymoon. I didn't even know of this. So now I'm all excited. Was like, okay, I'm in. But we'll see. I mean, it could also be a little last minute, right? Surprise, we're going to TwitchCon. Carino, right before we end. Thank you, my dude. Did you see my Discord I tagged you in? You're gonna love it. Thank you for the 45 months in a row, sir. I hope your weekend was good. Thanks, Plasma Badger. Best luck either way, right? You take the honeymoon over TwitchCon, to be honest? Yeah, let's be honest. I mean, I've gone to TwitchCon twice already. I've never had a honeymoon, though. I think I spelled this all right. We're good to go. Yeah, if the honeymoon takes you to TwitchCon. It's actually back in San Diego. It's back in San Diego. No more Vegas. Friends. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for spending it here with us. We made some really yummy things Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I know some of you are actually making them next week, which makes me honestly so happy. That's why I do this every weekend with you to spread the deliciousness and inspire you to cook better food for yourself at home. And if you share it, that's like a bonus, right? Okay, so Taz is making chicken pot pie. I will be back on Twitch on Friday next week. 11 a.m. Pacific is when we start every day. And stay tuned in Discord. I'll post the schedule coming up of what we're going to be cooking or doing. So thank you, everyone. Greek, thanks for gifting the sub today. Torino, thanks for the subby. Welcome in new followers. That's all I got. I'm about to hit this button. Hope you guys have a fun and safe week at work and we're around on discord if you need anything bye